morning. I sure appreciate it. I think that we have Jack Cannon now. I'm sure you've heard about this thing in Ohio where these wild animals escape. You did not? It sounds crazier than last night's debate. It's crazy, and, and it's, it's quite likely dangerous. So let's throw it back to New York and Christine and Allie. All right. Thanks, Carol. You know, schools are closed in Muskegon County, Ohio. Police there are hunting down grizzly bears, big cats, and other dangerous animals that somehow got out of an, an exotic animal farm. Uh, it's uh, still a bit of a mystery as to how this happened, but who are you going to call when it happens? How about the legendary wildlife expert, uh, Jungle Jack Hanna, the director emeritus of the zoo and the aquarium right next door in Columbus and the wild? He joins us now on the phone. Jack, thank you for being with us. I know you're there uh, in a bit of rain. Uh, I know they called you in. You know this area well. Tell me what you know about what has happened so far, how many animals are on the loose, how many they've got. All right. Now, remember, I was in State College, PA, and I drove all night. I got here about an hour ago. I talked to the sheriff. It looks like we have about uh, 31 animals down. Uh, we have uh, three uh, cats. I don't know what they are. We're getting ready to go up there in just about uh, 30 minutes. It's daylight now. We're going to assess the situation. If there's no human life, people have to understand something, everyone. Human life comes first, and we're trying our best to make sure no one is hurt doing this. The animals, the question is, why didn't we, the sheriff tranquilize them last night? It was dark, number one. You cannot tranquilize an animal in the dark. It upsets them. It's like you got popped with a little stick, you know, mm -hmm. a shot. And they go, they go, they, they settle in, they hunker down, they go to sleep. Obviously, we can't find them in the dark. So what had to be done had to be done. Even a bear came after one of the officers last night because he was just trying to get out of a car. So what happened with that, no one loves animals more than me, but human life has to come first, and then we're concentrating now today. I've got my veterinarians behind me here. We're going to go up there in the daylight with the sheriff to assess that no human life is in danger. At that point, we will tranquilize the animals. I'm making room at the Columbus Zoo and the wilds to take these animals. There's primates in the house there that we're going to take care of, and there might be a leopard or two up there, we understand still. But we don't know. There's about eight animals unaccounted for now that we're going to try to locate today. So you know, uh, Christine here, thanks so much for joining us and giving us the update on this. So there are some animals that are still on the premises of, of the preserve, but tell us what's the situation. The, the preserve was left open. One report I had was that there was actually a hole in one of the fences. How many animals are outside the preserve? How many are inside, or do we just not yep. know yet? All right. Well, right now we don't know, but there are, as I said, three cats we think up there inside still. There were the enclosures all cut open. Even his perimeter fits is, is down, I guess, some of it. So that's how some of the animals were outside his 40 acres, by the way, and that's the ones that had to be put down. Now, whether other animals did that, I don't know. Right now it's raining here. Usually with animals like when it's raining, they'll hunker down. However, these are captive animals, obviously, so they're probably, some of them are concerned, some of them might not leave the area because that's where they're fed. That's what we're hoping. Uh, but in the rain right now, more than likely, the animals are not out there running around going further. So the rain's in our favor, but against our favor as well because they're hiding. So hopefully we can get up there today with our staff and, and locate most of these creatures. I think there's eight or nine unaccounted for. Jack, you actually know of this facility from which these uh, these animals escaped. Tell me what you know about it, what its history is. All right. I have never been there, but I saw the sheriff's report. Uh, there must be 20, 30 sightings against him, some for animal cruelty, uh, some for uh, animals getting loose. I just saw it briefly here a minute ago. And, and right now, under Governor Strickland, prior to Governor Kasich, he signed a bill. That's fine to sign a bill, but who's going to take care of it? Who's going to employ the people to inspect these places? What well, well, I want to get with the governor on this afternoon, we have a bill that he's, the governor got in touch with me two, about two weeks after he was elected to start a committee forming to how we stop a lot of these people have these animals that shouldn't have them. Now, obviously, I'm sorry to say our, our bill was not quite done yet, and now I'm sure it's going to be put on the top burner. I'm not the governor, but we have to do something to stop the source of these animals. It's not man this man here. Where is he getting the animals from? Where do drugs come from? That's what we have to do is stop the source, and that's what I intend to do myself. If it takes every bone in my body to work with the governor in this state to stop these auctions in the state of Ohio, to stop the source, at that point, then we can stop where these people are getting these animals. Because yeah. so you're right, Ohio has some lax laws. It's got to stop. Jack, do you know why this man, uh, Terry Thompson, I think is his name, the guy who owned this place, why he had these animals? Was he running this as a tourist attraction? Is this for his own his own edification? What, what was the purpose of all of these animals uh, here in, in well, Ohio? My understanding is he had them for his own, I guess, his own collection. You know, that's all any of us can understand. I've never seen the place. I just know I heard about it about three years ago. My people went up there to look at it. We couldn't do one thing because he had some kind of permit. I mean, it gets a lot to go take somebody's stuff if he has it legally. We cannot do that. Uh, so I wish we could have done that, but we didn't do it. And now look what we have here. Now we're going to shut this, start shutting these things down. And I'm sure there's some pe breeders in Ohio that might be saying some reputable breeders, by the way, privately. And we got to be careful that these people who really believe in what they do and have the proper permitting, the proper enclosures, that we, this bill has to be signed the correct way where we shut yep. the people down like this man who just was like collecting everything. You know, you can't do that.
Uh, Jack, one last question. You say there might be eight more animals out there. Do you know what kind of animals they are? Are they dangerous? And what do people in Ohio do if they come across these animals? All right. What you do, everyone, is when you see a, 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 if it's a bear or a cat, a cougar, lion, tiger, whatever it might be, leopard, you do not run. It's the first one. I have a place in Montana part-time, a hike with the grizzlies. When you come across an animal, everyone, you start yelling and screaming. 95% of the time, that animal, especially these animals, will run. You do not run from the animal. That's, that's a, a no-no. The animal doesn't look at you as a human. It looks at you as, oh, it's running. Let's go get it. And you just cannot run. That's the first word of advice I have. You get inside your house and call uh, the police, and we'll get out there and take care of it. Yeah, stay in your car, stay in your house. I mean, they're saying they're the, the yeah. reason why the sheriffs went out there is because they were getting reports along I-70 that people were seeing wolves wow. along the along the highway, and and they knew something was up. Do you have any information? The sheriff tell you any information about what happened there? Was there foul play involved here? What did they think? Did somebody let those animals go, or was this some crazy crazy well, error? No, that's a, I've not heard of anything on the highway right now. No, it, this it is, it is next to I-70. We have these signs on the interstate right now that's saying exotic animals loose, uh, call 911. So we've got that on both the interstates and telling people, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're our best person to tell us what's happening. That's all. But no, I've not heard about any animals on the interstate. All right. Jack, good to see you as always. Thanks very much for, uh, for getting with us on short notice. Jack Hanna is, Hanna is the Director Emeritus of the Columbus Zoo in the Wild. He's out there uh, helping out, uh, helping authorities out now that the sun is up. And this, this clarifies a question that we had, yeah. why they weren't tranquilizing the animals that they've put down overnight. Uh, because they, they could still run away and hide. And then now they're going to try and tranquilize. He said there are eight animals unaccounted for right now, and they're going after them. And again, the sheriff's office saying that they were receiving reports of animals, and then they went to go yeah. check out this obvious source of what these animals could be, and they found uh, the owner dead. It, still, we do not know the, the, the source of all that, what happened, was he killed by the animals? How did they get they, out? How did they get out? Yeah. What exactly happened there? So we'll continue to follow it and get to the bottom of all that. Still to come this morning.